Hi, Nico here. So, here's the second part of my video on how I made this cocktail dress with scrap fabric. So, just sit down and enjoy, and I hope you pick up something really valuable from this video. Thank you. So, last time I left you with how I made the draped bodice. Now, I'll show you how I made the entire dress. So, with this one, you can see I'm pleating the skirt on the bodice. So you can see I've thread traced the waistline of the skirt and also the bodice. And I pinned and marked it with a white wax pencil. So I just keep on doing this until I achieve my desired effect. I'm not really so exact with my pleating here. I'm actually just playing with it so you know it's really up to you I, j I just want this dress to look or I just want the skirt to look very unformulaic very organic just like pleats so I'll just pin this and keep on marking I'm making a notch with the wax pencil okay so after that I'll be hand stitching the pleated part because I was able to sew some of the skirts on the bodice but unfortunately my needle kept on breaking on the pleated part because this is a really thick fabric so I had no choice so with this one I'm actually doing back stitch at an eighth of an inch okay just to give it a really sturdy stitch because back then, you know, when there were no sewing machines, they, people usually use back stitches when stitching or making strong stitches on a garment. So I'm doing this. And you can see at the pointed end of the waistline there, I made a notch to, get, to give the skirt more ease and the bodice more ease of movement. You really have to do that special way especially with pointed ends of a garment like collars necklines so i'm gonna keep on doing that oh correction i snip the pointed part of the waistline over there to give it more ease and movement so this is what it looks like on the right side and now I'm about to drape over the false knot. So with this one, I actually cut this part on the bias so that it will render graceful folds on the fabric, or rather dress. Okay, being, being organic, being unpredictable as usual, you know, because I want this to look very natural. Okay, so I snip that part there and insert it inside the pleat. I'm just folding everything in, making sure there are no raw edges that are exposed. Okay. Just pleating everything. I don't want it to look rigid as much as possible, you know. Just want it to look very natural, very effortless. Like a natural bow. And after pinning everything, I'm now stitching this false knot on the dress using a felling stitch at an eighth of an inch to give it a sturdy hold. Okay, I'm just sewing all around the bow, holding everything in as much as possible. Avoid exposing any raw edges to give this bow its longevity.
And when you're at the end of your stitches, just make three backing stitches or reverse stitch stitches to give it a more secure hold and this is what it looks like roughly. So I'm still stretching the straps over there. Okay, I think we're now ready to sew in the zipper. Now again, since you know I'm much, uh, pretty much of a big fan of hand stitches, since and since this dress will be rented out, I really wanted this to be hand stitched pretty much because. Machine stitches can actually damage the dress if it will be altered eventually. So, hand stitches are a safe bet when you know assembling a garment and you know that it will be altered because there will be less wear and tear if you sew it by hand. Okay, so again. I'm still stitching this using back stitches at an eighth of an inch. And now it's time for me to join in the lining. Now I had a bit of difficulty with the lining. There was some easing on the neckline on the left part. So what I did with that one is that I had to fell stitch it temporarily okay by pinning it uh, folding it folding the excess inside then pinning and fell stitching it so that it will look very smooth on the outside and after fell stitching everything I'll be back stitching the lining on the wrong side but with the rest of the neckline I didn't have much trouble but on this part alone since some of the parts of the fabric were cut on the bias grain, there was some bulking or bunching up, so this really had to be done. That's the risk of, you, uh, of working with a bias, it really stretches. So you can see my fell stitching there. Do this really carefully. And after the fell stitches, I'm now permanently sewing the lining by hand using back stitches. So you've seen me a while ago fell stitching this. Now I'm going to make it more secure by doing this back stitches on the lining. Okay, making sure that I sew correctly on both sides. And I'm still sewing at an eighth of an inch. Okay, and since you know this will be rented out, you know, the beauty of hand stitching is that you can easily alter this, you can easily rip this out in case you have to alter it. So there's our end knot. So here I am now prick stitching the facing of the lining. Now, I do apologize for the terrible lighting since I don't have a ring light of my own yet. So, eventually I'll have one. But, okay, going back. Okay, prick stitching or pick stitching is the hand stitch version of under stitching. You do this on the facing of a garment's lining to stabilize it so that it wouldn't show up. 
Okay, because if you don't understitch or in this case rather, quick stitch the facing, chances are this will bunch up and show on the neckline. You also do this actually on the seam, on the arm side and also the collars. This is seen a lot in bespoke tailored collars. That's how you know if a garment has been a hand stitch. So I'm just making consistent brick stitches here. Just enough pressure, don't pull too much or else it will ripple or curl. And there's our end knot. Okay. So this is what it looks like on the finished product. So there's our prick stitches consistently stitched and now I'm fell stitching the lining on the zipper. So okay this is the last part so I'm really going to be careful with this one. Oh, how I wish I've just you know fast how I, how I wish I was this fast in reality. But you know since this is the last procedure of our construction you really have to be really careful with this. Okay, and we're almost done so you know you just have to chill while doing this. And after the fell stitching, voila, this is what it looks like. So this is what couture dresses look from the inside and this is our before and after photos. I actually made a separate petticoat for this dress so that it will look grand on our photos. But you can wear it without a petticoat. I just want it to look very 1950s, almost very Dior-like. After all, the inspiration for this dress was actually a Dior dress. Okay, so that's it. Okay guys, that's all for this video. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Now please don't forget to hit like and subscribe and I'll see you guys until the next video. Thank you very much. I hope you pick up something from this video.